Today I am going to discuss about some basic features of ultra filters but before going through it first let me discuss about the definitions of filters and ultra filters. Now most probably all of us know what is the meaning of a filter we can consider in this way that a filter on a set X is nothing but a non-empty family f of subsets of x such that number 1 phi should not be a part of it number 2 f should be closed uh, under finite intersection and also the last part we can say if B is any member of this family and B is a subset of A then A is definitely a part of F for all A comma B be a subset of X so this is the basic definition of filter obviously there are different types of filter for instance you can consider atomic filter cofinite filter but I am not discussing about those definitions because my main objective is to discuss about some basic properties of ultra filter. So let us consider the definition of ultra filter. Now simply we can say a filter capital F on a set X is said to be an ultra filter if it is a maximal element in the collection of all filters that means out of all possible filters it is the largest possible filter whatever you are considering obviously all these are defined over x and there is another restriction it should be partially ordered by inclusion now what does it mean that means you can say if f is an ultra filter then it is not properly contained in any filter on X because already you have said it is the maximal element that's why it cannot be properly contained in any other filter defined over X now obviously we have a very important result regarding ultra filter I am saying this one as theorem 1 that every filter is contained in an ultra filter. Now to prove this one actually we can, we can consider the proof of this uh, theorem as a particular application of Zorn's lemma so we can start like this let a be a filter on x and let g be the collection of all filters on x contain F so we can say F belongs to G and that means you can say G is non-empty now obviously let us consider 
partial order on G by means of inclusion. So, we can also apply Zorn's lemma to G and for this purpose we can say let G i where i belongs to the index set capital I be a non-empty chain in G and for convenience we take G can be considered as union of G i where i belongs to index set capital I you can say this one is nothing but G1 because already we have used G that's why now we claim that G1 is nothing but a that means whatever we have considered here G1 is equivalent to union of G i and we are going to claim that whatever we have constructed by means of G1 it is nothing but a filter on X so I am writing this is a filter on X clearly this part doesn't belongs to G1 as per our construction and actually you can write this is doesn't belongs to GI for all I belonging to capital I now to show that G1 is closed under finite intersection because remember F is closed under finite intersection this is the second criteria G1 is closed under finite intersection we can consider or better to say you can write it is sufficient to show that uh, the intersection of two members of G1 is again is in, again in G1 now for this purpose we can take let A comma B belongs to G1 we are assuming this then there exists say two suffixes I and J belonging to capital I such that A belongs to G I and B belongs to G J. Now already we have said as the collection G I such that I belongs to index set I is a chain. That means it should be linearly ordered under the inclusion symbol like this. So that we can say it follows that either G i is a subset of G j or G j is a subset of G i we can write in this way so actually we are using the inclusion symbol in like this that means one is a subset of the other now in the first case we can say a comma b belongs to what gi and because gi is a part of gj so directly we can say a comma b belongs to gj so 
that A intersection B is also a part of GJ as as per our construction GJ is a filter. Similarly, in the second case, we can say that A intersection B is a part of GI. So in either case we can say obviously A intersection B belongs to G1. So finally we are considering another structure C belongs to G1 and let D is a superset of C in X. Now our objective is to show that D is also a part of G1. Now we have to show D belongs to G1. Now we can write as per our construction C belongs to GI for some I belongs to index set capital I and so we can also say D belongs to GI as GI is a filter. So actually we are following the definition of filter nothing else but if this is true that D belongs to GI then definitely we can say D is a part of what G1. So we can write that we have shown that G1 is a filter defined over capital X. So it is obvious that G1 contains the family F as each GI does we can write in this way is the formal language and so G1 is also a part of G and by its construction we can say it is an upper bound for the chain whatever we have constructed earlier GI such that I belongs to capital I. That means we have shown that every chain because obviously this chain was constructed arbitrarily that every chain in G has an upper bound in G. Now remember the criteria for Zorn's lemma. As per criteria, criteria of Zorn's lemma we can say right now G should contain a maximal element. So we can write that one too. So by Zorn's lemma G contains a maximal element and obviously say this maximal element is H. Now we claim H is an ultra filter that is H is also maximal uh, in the set of all filters 
on x or defined over x whatever you say for let if it is not then we are verifying this statement for let if k is a filter on x such that h is contained within k then as f is contained within h so we can write f is also contained within k and so k is also a part of g but h is maximal in g as per our construction maximal in g and so we can say only one possibility is true in this case that is h must be k and so h must be an ultra filter containing f and here comes the proof hence the proof this is a very important result obviously in such short videos it is not possible to explain everything but i have tried my best to explain this theorem if you have any doubt then you can ask me via comment box and obviously you can post your questions there too and later on i will try to upload more and more theorems of the, in this topic so that you can easily solve them in your examination thank you